The Mickelson interferometer is a setup which uses beam splitters for many optical interferometry uses. The configuration of many relevant uses not only to be studied at collegiate level, but for breakthrough physics research globally. This proving the presence of the so-called ether, which is a supposed medium of space that the Earth will travel through. Detecting gravitational waves and even playing a major role in postulations leading up to general and special relativity, to name a few. Before considering the mechanics of the Michelson interferometer, let us first consider the waves involved and what it actually is. In the Michelson interferometer, electromagnetic waves, or EM waves, are used. These are transverse waves, so the wave displacement is perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. EM waves are formed of two components, an electric and a magnetic component, oscillating in planes perpendicular to one another. EM waves can be described using the standard wave equation, where psi x is the wave function, a, pro a property that relates the probability of where a particle, such as a photon, is found. A is the amplitude of the wave, k the wave number, being defined as equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength lambda. Little x is the displacement in the direction of the wave propagation. Omega is the angular frequency, and t is the time elapsed. The interferometer consists of five parts. One light source, two mirrors, one beam splitter, that's pretty much just a fancy term for a prism or mirror that splits a beam in two, and a detector. Let's say we have a monochromatic light wave coming from the source here. The beam splitter is going to divide the beam into two equal parts, and we will have one beam going up to mirror one, and another one going directly to mirror two. They are then both going to come back and combine at this detector. Now, if they have travelled just as far, they will be in phase, and will add up constructively. However, if for instance the second beam was moving through an ether, some kind of material people used to believe filled the universe, and the first one is not, they will have travelled different distances and have different phases. The intensity at the detector will have decreased. By viewing the intensity incident on the detector, interferometry gives us pretty much the most accurate ruler we have ever created. Let's briefly look at what can cause a phase difference. Firstly, the difference between the mirrors could differ. If, for instance, the apparatus is on a train, the mirrors will move relative to each other, and this can be used to show that the speed of light is the same for all observers. Secondly, it could be caused by ripples in space-time causing gravitational waves, as mentioned earlier. There could also be a medium between the mirrors introducing a longer path for one of the beams. This could have been caused by an ether, as we talked about earlier, it could also be a medium we intentionally introduce, such as a thin film. Now, as we move the adjustable mirror, we can see that the interference pattern changes. This is because moving the adjustable mirror forward by lambda over 4, a quarter of a wavelength of the light, results in a total phase shift of lambda over 2. And so the two waves destructively interfere. If we continue moving the adjustable mirror forwards, the interference pattern will alternate between constructive and destructive interference. And the general way to determine which will happen when is by knowing the relevant formulae. In order to measure the intensities of the brightness or darkness of the Michelson interferometer, there are some slightly complicated maths involved. You can model each of the waves in the form of the equation shown, and we'll call the total amplitude the detector screen A total. Now, if we label each of the paths as L1 and L2, we can forget about the time dependence of the light waves, as we're just considering the intensity of the wave at a certain point. The intensity doesn't vary with time, so we might as well set the time to t equals zero. We can call the wave going along the upper path as the equation shown, and the lower path as the other one. Note that we've added two to the distance that the path has travelled because the light waves will travel from the beam splitter to the mirror and then back again. Also, we can forget about the distances from the source to the beam splitter and the distance from the beam splitter to the detector as both light waves travel along the path, so it wouldn't affect the phase difference between the waves. We can write that the interference at the detector screen is equal to the following. Now since the intensity of a wave is proportional to the amplitude squared, and e to the power of anything is 1, we can say that the intensity of the wave at the detector screen is proportional to 4 amplitude squared cos squared of k delta. Therefore, is proportional to cos squared of k delta. Note that we've removed the constants from the maths. Now we can say that the maximum intensity is equal to i0. This means that the intensity is equal to i equals i0 cos squared k delta. What you might encounter in a lab is typically measuring the thickness or refractive index of a film, 
but as mentioned, the Michelson interferometer is used for lots of groundbreaking physics as well. That should hopefully have shed some light on a topic that's not so easy, but not too difficult either. Get it? Ether.